talk us bad for a day is yet another grade A title from Rareware Limited, Nintendo's second party developer behind games like Perfect Dark, GoldenEye, and Banjo Kazooie. What makes Conker's Bad for a Day different from the other games is that although on the outside it may seem like another cute and cuddly 3D platformer, underneath it's filled with blood and guts, gore, and suggestive themes. Conker didn't start out this way, though. In its initial stages, Conker 64 and Conker 12 Tales, it was much like Banjo Kazooie and other 3D platformers for the N64. But after some restructuring and a lot of criticism from the press, Rare decided that they would rework the title into the M-rated form it is today. Conkers begins with Conker in a bar, drinking with his friends who are bound for war. After he has a few too many drinks, he stumbles out of the bar and meets up with a strange figure. Upon meeting the strange figure, Conker proceeds to puke on his shoes and then stumble out into the dark and rainy night. After stumbling around in the rain for quite a while, Conker becomes lost and passes out. When he wakes up the next day, he finds that his world has changed drastically, and he finds himself in a world made of poo. He finds many strange characters that are more than likely to curse at him than do anything else. And he also finds that he has no, no idea how to get home. As the game begins, Conker's main directive is to try to find his way home. As he starts stumbling around the world, he starts to notice that the world is created entirely out of feces. This is just scratching the surface of what Conker's Bad Fur Day brings to the table. Most of the subject matter is squarely targeted at adults, but what makes it so somewhat ironic is that the characters used in the game probably would be more likely to be found in a kid's game. Conker will ride dinosaurs that will bite cute characters and rip them in half. He'll go to a rave party and drink some beer and dance with some of the other animals. He smashes a boss's testicles with his frying pan. The list goes on and on. It's really outrageous and nothing can really prepare you for some of the things that he does. Really, Conker's Bad Fur Day may seem outwardly like a kid's game, other than the subject matter, but there's three things that really make it targeted towards adults. First of all, the subject matter, of course. Second of all, movie spoofs. There are tons and tons of movie spoofs throughout the game, including movies like The Terminator, The Matrix, Gladiator, Saving Private Ryan. The list goes on and on. You might notice that all those movies are R-rated movies, and Conker does seem to emulate most of the scenes that are the most gore-ridden or suggestive from those movies. Another aspect of Conker's Bad Fur Day that will appeal to adults is the gameplay variety. Instead of having to go to different parts, parts of the world and learn new moves and then come back and use them somewhere else, anytime you need a move, all you do is step on a context-sensitive pad and press the B button. Once you do this, sometimes it'll give Conker a slingshot, other times it'll give him disguises, like a mining pad that he can use to see in the dark, and other things like that. This also cuts down on the gameplay time significantly, but it probably will make it more appealing to adults who don't have time to remember every item that they've collected before and where maybe they could use it. Another aspect of the game that will appeal to adults is the multiplayer modes. The multiplayer modes has an extensive deathmatch mode for up to four players, and you can basically choose from dozens and dozens of weapons. You can set the time limit, you can set the frag limit, and then you go out and you blast it out. Unlike Perfect Dark or Goldeneye, though, this mode is in third person and is kind of similar to Jet Force Gemini's multiplayer deathmatch. And to be honest with you, the, the deathmatch in this form doesn't have the staying power of some of the other games, but it's still a nice touch at the end. As far as the graphics are concerned, there's really no equal on the N64 for Conker's Bad Fur Day. The graphics are simply incredible. From the reflection routines, you can see Conker's reflection as he's hovering above water the real-time lighting that's multicolored. He can walk past lighting and you can see his shadow stretch along the wall. While this does present some problems with jumping, as you may, be, as you may know, in 3D platformers, the trick is always to watch the shadow come over the platform, that way you know when to land. Well, in Conker's Bad Fur Day, the real-time shadows don't give you that perfect circle underneath Conker, so you have to really rely on your eye a little more to try to judge your jumps. Also, Conker has almost two hours of real-time cinemas. Not only are these real-time cinemas include streaming voice, but they also have facial animations that match the text perfectly. This was done in Turok 3 for a couple cutscenes, but this is done all the way through Conker's Bad Fur Day, and this is really a first for the console. It's something that when you see it, you're like, wow, this is the next step on the console. But unfortunately, as you well know, this is the last year the S64 will probably be viable, so this might just have to be the pinnacle of graphical development on the system. As I had said before, the length is kind of short. It clocks in around 15 to 20 hours for the average player, which compared to previous Rare platformers like Banjo-Kazooie or Banjo-Tooie, that's quite short. 
But even so, the game is paced in such a way that it's always exciting to fire the game up and see what's going to happen next. While controversial, Conker's Bad Fur Day is one solid playing 3D platformer. It discards all the random collecting and monotonous searching one area to take the item to the next that a lot of older players haven't liked about platformers in the past. While granted, the graphics are still targeted towards children, minus the gratuitous gore and violence, I still believe that the content, such as the movie spoofs, the toilet humor jokes, and the adult content, will appeal to an older audience, and if anything, hopefully people won't take it too seriously, and they'll enjoy it for what it is.